today I am going to talk to you about, guess what, snacks. I was seeing patients today and somebody brought that up. I'm like, that's a great idea. Let's do a video about this. So people want to have snacks, right? They get hungry, you know, you work out, you know, and you may be on insulin, you may be on medications. Some medications can can I bring your blood sugars down a little bit? For whatever the reason, when you get hungry, I don't want you to get your hands on anything. You have to kind of have some idea of what you can and what you cannot do. You can still enjoy snacks without letting your blood sugar sky high or without needing to take extra medication. Let's get started. I made this video for normal people who have a normal life who are not in the extremes of keto or anything like that. So uh, again, remember, uh, there is another life out there that people live. It's not, uh, everything is not just about keto. Okay, so now when you talk about snacks, let's go over some basic things, what you're looking in a snack. The snack has to have number one, high fiber, right? Number two is nutrient dense. Number three, minimal to no added sugars. Number four, high in fat, healthy fat, <laughs> and high in protein. Let's look into what are your options now. So my number one list is almonds. Now, almonds are good, why? because they are very low in carbohydrates and there's a lot of fiber. So when you take the fibers out, there's only two grams of net carbs left in your one portion. Now, how do you know one portion? I would say like taking a handful of almonds. The problem with almonds are, well, you can call it a problem or not, it's up to you, but uh, it's, it's high in calories. So there's a lot of protein and f healthy fat. Uh, so as a result, it's the, I think one of the greatest snacks uh, and you know, you will stay satisfied for a long time. So let's say I'm seeing patients, I have no time for lunch. I, I just grab a cup, you know, a handful of almonds and then that keeps me going the rest of the day. So I don't even have to have a lunch. So it's very satisfying, delicious. There are, it comes in very different seasonings. Uh, so it's, it's up to you. I think this is, um, the best way to stay satisfied while keeping your blood sugar in check. And not to mention, almonds have 15 different vitamins and minerals, so it's better than chewing on a beef jerky all day. I mean, come on, you know, you have to have some vitamins and minerals. Is number two in my list is veggies and hummus. Now, hummus is great. I was actually eating hummus yesterday with some vegetables, actually carrots it was, and I was like, uh, oh, that's a great idea that I can talk about because um, it makes any veggies that you hate, literally, uh, tasteful. So, it, it be, you know, like you put carrots, you put cucumbers, you put bell peppers, even cauliflowers, everything will taste great with hummus. Now, in addition to that, you know, if you didn't know what a hummus is, it's made from chickpeas, it's a creamy spread, it's wonderful. Uh, two teaspoons of hummus is only three grams of carbs. So, three grams of carbs and you have your veggies with it, what else do you need, right? The only problem in some people, if you're not used to it, it may create a little uh, indigestion or gas problems, but uh, you'll get used to it. So number three, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese is wonderful. Why? Because it has a lot of protein in there and then very little carbs, around maybe four grams of carbs and 13 grams of protein in one cup. Now, of course, eating cottage cheese by itself may not be as fun, but you can put some splenda on it maybe and put some berries. Um, of course, you have to go easy on the top, uh, on the tops, but you still can make it fun and enjoyable and having some cottage cheese handy in your fridge will be a great idea if you don't want to keep eating hummus and stay gassy all day. So, uh, not that it happens to everyone, by the way. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that you will be gassy with hummus, but uh, not, some people do get that. And even then, I think your stomach gets used to it after a while, so that gassiness shouldn't be a huge problem in the long term. Number four, edamame. Edamame, if you're not uh, familiar with it. It's basically green soybeans. You can steam it in a pot or use it dry, but I think dried edamame is very nice, very addicting, very tasty. Uh, it is very good because it has a lot of proteins, around 17 grams per portion. It has around 15 grams of carbs, but a lot of fiber. So it only leaves you with seven grams of net carbs, and it is very nutritious and very delicious too. 
Number five is Greek yogurt. I love Greek yogurt. A lot of people don't. Uh, you better do because it is very good, high in, high in protein and one of my favorite for breakfast actually. And the reason for that is uh, it is very satisfying. It keeps you full. Uh, and you have to be careful about how much fat you are getting in that, but uh, reduced fat is not bad at all. You can put some tops like some um, uh, berries and some splenda if you are if you like the sweet taste. Uh, but the bottom line is one serving can keep you full with not a lot of carbohydrates. So I think that is another wonderful idea for snacking. Number six. Number six is cheese. Now, of course, not any cheese. And I'm not saying cheese just to be smiley here. Cheese is really good, especially string cheese. If it is low fat, there's almost no carb in there. And it will also help you getting your calcium in. And it will keep you full and satisfied. So keeping the string cheese in your refrigerator is a wonderful idea. And you can always eat that with veggies as well. And it only has like 50 calories per stick. So if you have two sticks, you'll probably feel full. And you will be having a great snack, great time, and no blood sugar spikes. Number seven, another favorite is tuna. Now, why tuna is good? Because it has zero, zero carbs, literally. And yeah, some people will say, well, the like, tuna is really not that tasty, you know, but the thing is you can make it really tasty. Here's how you do it. So you're gonna have tuna can, right? So these are generally not high in salt as well. So that's something that you have to watch for, but you get that tuna and you mash up some avocado, not mayo, okay? But you can have a very creamy taste if you are using some mashed avocado. And you can even mix that with more vegetables like cucumbers, bell peppers, etc., green onions, and you can make it a salad. That will be wonderful. This is gonna taste amazing. Uh, you can also use it as a dip if you don't like it as a salad. You can just as use it as a dip. You can do that as well. But the bottom line is, it can be very satisfying if you're hungry. It can replace a whole entire meal, and it is a lot of protein and zero carbs. Number eight, I would say number eight would be chickpeas. Here we go. How much was chickpeas? Now we are talking about chickpeas again. But the chickpeas are really good because you can actually, if you're having like this crunchy, you say you want to have some crunchy, you, know, you don't want to have go and have some um, potato chips just to satisfy your crunchy uh, cravings. You can use that chickpeas. You can basically mix it with some olive oil, with some salt, and put it in the oven 400 degrees, like 20 minutes or so. Get it crispy and crunchy. Uh, and then you can also like try cumin, pepper, whatever you like to have as a seasoning, you can and get that uh, nice crispy feeling with the chickpeas. Now, one fourth cup of chickpeas can still have 15 grams of carbs, but with the fibers, you're basically reducing your carbs by half and still is a very healthy snack and can be very satisfying. Number nine is the fruits. Of course, fruits are full of sugar. You know that, and I know that too. But uh, now, if you want to talk about, like, if you want to hear more about uh, the, the, the fruits, I have a whole entire video about this. So click below for the link to get that. Uh, but in addition to that, I'm just going to talk to you about the, the best snacking option here. Uh, very easy. I think the berries are the easiest thing you can get your hands on. Like, cleaning is very easy. You don't have to really cut up or anything like that. And you can just uh, just turn to your mouth and you know it's so easy to snack on and the berries especially blackberries and raspberries are very low in calories and carbohydrates so but as, as we talked about the fruit video it's really about how much you eat it's not necessarily what you eat with the fruits here there's some fruits like mangoes and and grapes are like very high in sugar uh, but if your portion size is small it shouldn't be a big problem like if you're trying to eat like two, three bananas at once, yeah, it's going to spike your blood sugar. But if you're having a health banana, for example, that's not going to be a big deal as well. So just keep that in mind. Number 10 is popcorn. And you're going to be like, what the freak, right? <laughs> so popcorns are actually not the ones that are like fake. You just put in the microwave with a bunch of stupid butter on it. You don't want that kind of popcorn. You want air pop popcorns and three cups of those popcorns are only like 15 to 18 grams of carbs 
which is not bad. I mean, if you're having that as a snack. Now, the only problem with the popcorns is so addictive that if you're not really measuring your uh, portion and you just uh, go ahead and make a huge, huge bag of popcorns, of course, you're going to end up with a bunch of carbs in your system. But if you are measuring and you're having only three cups of uh, popcorn, you can still get away with it with only 18 grams of uh, uh, carbohydrates. Not to mention there are vitamin, vitamins and minerals in there, there are fiber in there, so it's not, it may not be a big deal. And the bottom line is, um, you go with the snack you like, you know, you don't want to just eat something just to eat, you know, and, uh, and then you need to also see how your blood sugars are affected. If you have a Freestyle Libre or Dexcom or any sort of CGM, that's the best way to kind of monitor your blood sugars and see how you're responding. So if you're having, for example, like three cups of popcorn and your blood sugar pops up to 300, yeah, maybe that's not the best uh, deal for you. But the bottom line is you kind of have to experiment and see what works for you. In my opinion, these are the, uh, the snacks that if you want to have a snack that has some carbs in it, uh, you can enjoy these. It's better than just... Um, uh, eating grease all day like some keto people do so uh, enjoy your day guys and we'll see you in the next video